Hi everyone, I'm Kelsey from Teacher Gems. Thanks for joining me live today as I share 15 time-saving tips for teachers and a few goodies along the way. Now these tips are some ideas that I've used in my own classroom that I found helpful and um, I also use them now as a homeschool mom. So whether you're a first-year teacher or a veteran teacher, I hope that you will find these ideas helpful in your classroom. So first, my first tip is to keep a how-to folder on your computer. Now, I would um, create video tutorials um, or just a simple tutorial in a PowerPoint or a Word document where I could um, list out the steps that I needed to do um, for something that I might not um, do a lot of the time, but I know I'm going to have to go back and do it again. And this way, I don't have to um, relearn everything. I can just go and um, uh, read through my steps of how to do it. So let me show you. Um, so my next tip is to create a Jing video tutorial for yourself or for your coworkers. Now for this, you just um, Jing is a free download and it helps you to create screencasts of your computer so you can record your voice along with your computer screen and walk through all the steps um, to doing different things. So for example, I use this in my school when we switched over to Gmail and I would create um, short little video tutorials of um, how to do things like how to create um, filters in Gmail or how to um, create a custom signature on an email. Um, how to set up a group email, different things like that. And then I save this on our school's website on a set on a password protected page that um, only the staff could access. Tip number three, create a beginning of the year checklist. Here is a sample of one that I use and I have this available as a free download in my store. And I'll show you where you can find that in just a minute. Um, what I do is I list out everything that I need to do for the beginning of the school year. Run off my back to school night handout, put up birthdays bulletin board, print a class list. Anything that I need to do to um, get ready for my kids to come. List it all out on this list and be as specific as you can. So if you need to, um, like if you use a 10 by 13 inch manila envelope with a clasp um, to make your student folders. Write that down, and then next year when you go to do it, you will um, save yourself a lot of time in trying to remember everything. Also, you can check things off throughout the summer, and you won't get bogged down come fall. So let me just show you where you can find this free checklist in my store. If you go to my store um, on Teachers Pay Teachers here, and scroll down under Custom Categories over here on the left, you will see Back to School. If you click on that, it will take you to all my back to school resources. Um, just a side note here, I have these fun back to school get to know you graphs where um, students, um, you ask students different questions like what color are your eyes and they can um, graph, you know, how many students have blue eyes or green eyes. Um, it's just a fun way to get to know students. So scroll down here, you'll see all my back to school bulletin boards and things and at the bottom, Oh, lost my mouse. At the bottom, hold on a second, you will see this free checklist right here. And it's editable so you can use it and use it each year. I just do a save as each year with a new, um, sorry, flip your own there. I just do a save as each year with a new school year and then I just make my edits and um, I have it ready for um, each year and it's super easy and helpful so I don't have to rethink of what I did last year. All right, I'll take you back to the PowerPoint here. My next tip is to create a Google, a shared Google calendar for your computer lab schedule. Now maybe you're at a school that already has a computer lab schedule, but at my school we just had a sign up sheet on the door which worked fine if you're creating your plans at school and you could go and sign up for a time to use the computer lab. 
but it's super helpful if you're home to be able to check online and see if the lab's available. So we put together this Google Calendar that we all shared access to, and um, then I could sign up for a time at home, or you know, if I got done with a lesson early, I could um, check if the lab was available and um, sign up for a time and go the last 15 minutes of class, um, use the computer lab. My next tip is to keep a lost and found basket in your classroom. Can you see this picture here where there's a pipe cleaner on the light switch next to the pencil sharpener? Why wouldn't my student leave his pipe cleaner on the light switch while sharpening his pencil? Um, inevitably, students are going to lose things um, in the classroom and it's helpful to have this lost and found basket um, where you can just put all those lost items and um, cut down on distractions within the classroom. And you can find this free label in, on my blog and I'll show you that at the end. Alright, tip number six. Use a color coding system for important papers. Um, for example, yellow implies warning test coming soon. I would have different colors for different things, so review sheets were always printed on yellow paper. My newsletter was always on orange paper. Um, reminder notes were on purple. Um, if a student was absent, I would send home their makeup work on green paper. Um, and you can get as creative as, as you want with these. You could do a different color for each subject area. Um, but I would just provide a little key at the beginning of the school year to parents that explains your color coding system. And that way they always know what to look for and what to expect. Tip number seven, keep an extra set of textbooks at home. So when I was teaching, I would haul a huge um, bag on wheels back and forth between home and school. And I got teased by the other teachers as the flight attendant teacher because I had this big bag. Um, and it was a pain. So try to keep an extra set of books at home because you never know when you're going to need to make sub plans um, and need those books at home. And it will just save you the headache of having to haul everything back and forth. Tip number eight, take time to write lesson reflections at the end of each day. Whether you write these on the back of your lesson plans or on a sticky note and just attach it, you'll be so thankful that you took the extra five minutes it took to write these down um, the next year when you go to teach a lesson. You know, there'd be times when I was halfway through a lesson and I'd remember that it worked better to use a different kind of paper for this folding project um, or whatever the case may be. Jot it down and um, it's going to save you time in the long run. Tip number nine, keep a bin of extra papers. Every time I would run off copies for um, students, I would run off a few extra pages and I would put them in my extras bin. And that way, if a student misplaced a paper, which inevitably students are going to misplace things, um, I could put the responsibility back on them to go to the extra bin label and um, find the paper that they needed. So you can find this free label as well on my blog and I'll show you where to find that at the end of the video. Tip number 10, run off all papers needed for the week on the Friday prior. Now I'm not a morning person so to get up early on a Monday morning to get to school and run off all my papers did not sound like fun to me. So I would try to run off everything the Friday prior. Just saves a lot of um, headache and if you're sick for some reason on Monday, um, you have all the papers already run off for the sub and you don't have to worry about anything. Tip number 11, use sticky flags or highlighter to indicate last copy don't use. So I would put these, these sticky flags on papers like logic puzzles that I had in the back of the classroom that students could get in their spare time. And when the student got to the last one, they would bring me the page with the sticky flag and I'd make more copies. Well somebody shared on my blog to use a highlighter to write on the paper last copy and then when you go to print it it will not show up. So how cool is that? Tip 
Tip number 12, make samples of projects before having students do them. Whenever possible, make a sample to, um, for a project so that students know what to expect, what you're looking for, and um, if you don't have time, you could um, try to get a student to make one for you, or at the very least, try to save a student sample to use the next year. Tip number 13, keep a pad of paper and a pen next to your bed or your phone. So I always used to keep a piece of paper and a pen next to my bed for ideas that I would get in the night. Um, or sometimes I couldn't sleep because I had a big to-do list in my mind. So if I just jotted those things down, I'd be able to sleep better and I'd have that list um, for the next day um, to tackle my to-do list. Now I just keep my phone next to my bed and I use the notes app on my phone to record everything that I need. Tip number 14, use pre-assessments. Um, I use spelling pre-assessments a lot where I would give students the spelling list at the beginning of the week and if they got them all right then I would give them an alternative spelling list. I also did these for math and other subjects like that where um, I would give them the five hardest problems from the page and if they could get all of them correct then they would get an alternative assignment. And if the whole class got everything right, then we would just skip that lesson and move on to the next one. So you're saving yourself a lot of time um, from reteaching things that your students already know. And finally, my last tip is don't reinvent the wheel. If you haven't already heard of Teachers Pay Teachers or Pinterest, you need to go and check them out right away. Um, Teachers Pay Teachers is a great website where you can find lots of resources created by teachers um, that you can purchase, or um, a lot of them are free as well. And Pinterest is just a great place where you can um, gather ideas and save things for future use. So let me show you where you can find all these freebies. If you go to my blog, let me pull it up a second. Here on my blog, oops. Okay, if you go on my blog here and scroll down on the right sidebar, you'll see this blog post right here. And on the blog post, there are links to where you can download this free uh, lost and found label or the extras bin label, as well as a few other goodies. So I hope you found that helpful. If you have more time-saving tips for teachers, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have the best school year ever.